The Resident Evil franchise has spent a lot of time exploring the past, but it looks like we're finally moving ahead. Capcom has announced Resident Evil Village, so let's take a really close look at what we might expect from the next chapter in the series. The announcement trailer starts off with some vague text promising that his story will come to a close. Of course, the big question is, whose story is coming to a close? There are a couple of options we'll see, but let's keep an open mind. The trailer properly opens up with a voiceover reciting a fairy tale and a walk through some nondescript snowy woods. Cue the rundown shed that immediately gives off a Resident Evil 4 vibe. Like, I'm pretty sure that's the exact style shed that can be found in Resident Evil 4, and this is far from the only similarity we'll find. Shots of abandoned cabins give off the same feel, except this time the signs of a terrible struggler are just a tad more apparent. Hope that isn't a load-bearing beam with a big chunk blown out of it. Here we have a shot of a barn in similar disarray. Note another certainly load-bearing beam that's been split near the top. Clearly this place has a terrible termite problem. And of course, nothing conveys disrupted rural life like a box of spilt potatoes. The sprouts indicate that whatever's happening here has been going on for, what, a few weeks maybe? I think I've left potatoes in my cupboard about that long to get those results. Here we have more shots of the snowy woods, and then a bright light and we are safe and sound in a very modern looking living room where nothing bad could ever happen. Our mystery narrator is reciting a local tale which our unseen protagonist finds a bit creepy. Meanwhile, there are questions abound. It seems apparent that we're seeing through the eyes of one Ethan Winters from Resident Evil 7, but the woman sitting on the couch doesn't quite sound like his wife Mia, nor does she seem to be a brunette, though with this lighting it is hard to tell. We'll come back to maybe Mia in a minute, but now we're apparently flash-forwarding ahead to Ethan encountering an old man in one of our ransacked cabins. We'll call him Old Man Kendo. After a brief misunderstanding with a shotgun, Old Man Kendo seems to have just enough time to play the pronoun game with Ethan about the mysterious enemies in the neighborhood. Wait, that's no zombie. Yes, it seems that the rumors are true. Resident Evil 8 is going to have some kind of werewolfish enemy. One that's apparently pretty good at scripted grabs through the wall. From there, we continue our walk through the woods, eventually coming across a really weird looking symbol. The game's producers insist that this thing is pretty important to the plot, so much so that they were reluctant to show it at all, but really, your guess is as good as mine. It seems to be a fetus that has been pretty severely mutated, which I suppose could hint at a connection with, well, the connections. In case you missed that particular note, the connections are a shadowy group that created Resident Evil 7's Eveline and her predecessor Dahlia. Specifically, they were created by merging them with mutagenic mold during the embryonic stage. If Dahlia and Evelyn were the D and E series attempts, then it stands to reason that a whole alphabet of potential bioweapons could be out there. Next up, we have a nice shot of a warrior maiden statue, which is a familiar little throwback to the days of old. Following that, though, is some kind of alchemaic looking circle of symbols that we'll see in other places in the trailer. More on that later. Here we have a spooky cemetery and a spookier castle in the background, and to get inside I'm sure we're gonna have to find a pair of circular pieces to unlock that door. The woman on the left seems to be the same woman from the statue we just saw. Not sure what's going on with the demon though, or what it is that he's holding. Presumably inside the village we see a peasant woman holding a baby that is clearly important to the plot. This might be a good time to point out that it's entirely possible that whoever we saw with Ethan earlier may have been reading that creepy story to this same baby. Going back to the RE4 feel, we've got miserable looking villagers apparently cutting grain in the middle of winter, and note the familiarish looking symbol in the background. Here's another gate that we'll probably have to figure out how to open, and wow, they are really big on that weird sign. It's not exactly the same as the Los Illuminados from Resident Evil 4, but it definitely gives off the same kind of feeling. Here we have another NPC that appears to be some kind of matrony figure. And then we have this lovely lass. According to the rumors, which appear to have been largely accurate thus far, this should be Emily, a local villager that will be working with Ethan to find her missing father and get out of town. Here we seem to have another shot of old man Kendo apparently alive and well, so this may be before his meeting with Ethan, but he's definitely on the hunt for something. And another look at the sleeping baby. Could this be little Ethan Winters Jr.? If it is, considering at least one of his parents was disassembled and reassembled from the ground up by sentient mold, who knows what's going on with this kid's biology. 
And here's that alchemaic like symbol again. Looking at it from this angle, it seems very similar to the fetus symbol we saw earlier, so why is it being scratched in all over the place? This looks like our matron again with another NPC. He looks younger than the other guys we've seen in the village, but he's definitely a native considering that every man in this village wears the exact style hat. And there's the connection we've been waiting for, a single solitary reference to Umbrella attached to something that looks like it may be part of an elaborate puzzle box, so very appropriate. Odds are good we'll be seeking out a mermaid, a horse, a sun and moon, and whatever the last one is to open this thing up. If Emily is looking for her dad, I'd say odds are pretty good that this is him. He certainly seems to have had better days though, but that scarf is holding up nicely. And here's our matron again, clearly also having had better days. Meanwhile, Emily is apparently finding out that her friendly little village isn't so friendly. This guy seems to be really big on keeping doors shut. Boy, is he gonna hate what's coming up. Ba Ba Black Sheep, have you any wool? Nope, no bags full, just a creepy looking person carrying around a big branch that may or may not have skulls dangling off of it. I'm just gonna call it here. This is going to be the merchant of the game. We know from a shot of the inventory screen that the Resident Evil 4 influence is strong with this game, right down to the attaché case inventory and the existence of collectible currency. In this case, it seems we'll be looting this village of Lai, a Romanian currency which is probably a strong indicator of where this game will take place. This appears to be a hallway that just had a door explode at the end of it. Somebody in a dress is wielding a shotgun and seems to have just made a bloody mess out of the guy on the wrong end of it. And what do we have here? Taking a completely different tone, it looks like Ethan is doing a little window peeping on a fancy but still very witchy looking woman. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that she lives in this castle area rather than the village area. And here we have a couple other witchy looking ladies. What's interesting is that one of them seems to have Marguerite Baker's bug taming trick. Bring them all together and you have a... huh. Not a trio. That's weird. Witches usually come in threes, though I guess the darker ones might make up a trio of their own with Lady Big Hat here standing above them. Yeah, she's probably in charge. Checking out the castle itself, we have a nice look at a non-symmetrical main hall, which is quite the rarity in the Resident Evil franchise. And now we come back for a better look at our quote-unquote werewolf. The build in the facial hair seems to suggest a man-wolf, but the chest kind of implies otherwise. It looks like we'll be encountering wolf people of both genders in this village. Also take note of the spectators hanging around in the background. And a new challenger appears, as if werewolves weren't bad enough, now we've got a big guy with a big hammer jumping into the fray. Assuming this is part of the same scene, it kind of makes you wonder if the werewolf is our enemy or theirs. Back to what is presumably Ethan's house, we have a mysterious figure standing in the doorway. The old dude with the gun would not approve. We got another good look at Emily, and then who is this Van Helsing looking dude? We know he's not a villager because he's not wearing the right hat, plus the cool sunglasses are kind of a giveaway. He looks cool, but he's probably going to die a horrible death. And here come the men in black. Shifting back to Ethan's house, these guys obviously report to Mr. Stand Around with the Front Door Open looking directly into headlights. Now we got another look at Miss Big Hat Witch, though if she's doing what I think she's doing, she might be Miss Big Hat Vampire. And another good look at our werewolf, this time with a bit more masculine form. Finally, we reach the end of our long walk through the woods and look upon our horrific setting. It seems we have a village, followed by a giant church, followed by a castle, which... Seriously, this is literally Resident Evil 4 all over again. Still, I dig the wordplay on the name. Resident Evil 8 Age. I like to think that the entire concept of this game was based on making that play on words. And of course, there's the surprise reveal at the end. Yes, it turns out that Mr. Stand in the Doorway looking at headlights was Chris Redfield, looking very grim and more than a little villainy in his old age. It looks like Chris led the team that attacked Ethan and... Hmm, maybe that is Mia after all. Or was Mia. Now there seem to be a couple of takeaways here. The trailer clearly wants you to think that Chris Redfield just burst into the peaceful Winters family home and ruined their evening for some nefarious reason because he's evil and dressing like Wesker now. That's probably a big fake out. After all, this wouldn't even be the first time that Capcom has tried to tease us with the possibility of a Chris gone bad. 
I think it's more likely that the Winters family has gotten mixed up in a conflict between the Redfield and the Coordinators. That might not have even been Mia at all, even if Ethan thinks it is. If I had to piece things together, it sure looks like Chris and his Black Ops buddies burst in on Ethan to get him up to speed, resulting in Ethan going on a globetrotting quest to Romania to get his wife and or child back. After all, Chris is looking very stylish, and somebody had to give Ethan that very stylish attaché case. Speaking more broadly, it looks like Resident Evil 8 Age is going to pick up where its predecessor left off in other ways as well. One of the unique characteristics of Resident Evil 7 was that it was something of a walk through several horror genres. Jack representing the unstoppable slasher, Marguerite representing the creature feature, Lucas representing the torture porn genre, and Evelyn mimicking the mind games of a ghost movie. Likewise, it wouldn't surprise me to see Resident Evil 8 take a similar approach, giving us its version of werewolves, witches, and maybe vampires. At the same time, it's hard to ignore the game's similarities with Resident Evil 4, not just from the set pieces either. It seems a little too coincidental that Capcom has brought back the briefcase as an inventory system and reintroduced the concept of in-game currency to the series, just when rumors of a Resident Evil 4 remake are starting to float around. At the very least, you can probably expect a multitude of reused assets if Capcom decides to go that route and remake the game. Which, of course, also means we have to address the elephant in the room. Resident Evil 7 was heralded as a spectacular return to form for the survival horror franchise after more than a decade of increasingly embarrassing action shooter entries. Knocking it out again with the near-universal praise for Resident Evil 2 Remake, Capcom proved that there's still a market for those style games today. After two wildly successful survival horror games, and Resident Evil 3, is Capcom really going to be so quick to dive back into the action shooter pool? One would hope not, but only time will tell. With a 2021 release window, we have at least half a year to speculate how everything will go. So, where is Resident Evil Village setting on your hype meter? Are you all in? Cautiously optimistic? Mad about it being in first person? Or something else entirely? Let me know in the comments. Do all the YouTube things, and if you want to watch me play some Resident Evil, look me up at TeekTheGamer on Twitch. Have a nice day!